Dear viewers, welcome you all to our show, Orthopedic Solution Academy. Hope you all are well during this COVID-19 pandemic situation by wearing masks and keeping distance with each other. Dear viewers, before starting our program, I would like to show my deep respect to the father of nation of Bangladesh, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, and those martyrs who sacrifice their lives and everything to give us an independent Bangladesh. And definitely, I would like to give my salute to the people of India and the people of Russia who stand behind us during that crisis moment of Bangladesh. Dear viewers, this is the month of December. This is the month of victory and this is the month of proud to all Bangladeshi. And today, our topic is the trifocal osteosynthesis for management of large bone defect. And our honorable speaker is uh, Dr. Amar Sani from Gujarat, India. I would like to request uh, Dr. Amar Sani, sir, to join with us. Sir, welcome, welcome to our show. Thank you, Dr. Tanvir, and thank you, Dr. Bari, sir, and Prabhupada, sir, for providing an opportunity to present at this forum. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Thank sir. you very much, sir. Good afternoon, sir. And dear viewers, we have a learned academic expert with us. Uh, we have a Professor Mofakarul Barisar, the legendary lizard of surgeon from Bangladesh. I would like to request Professor Mofakarul Barisar to join with us. Yeah, thank you, Tanvir, for introducing me. And really, but, you mentioned this is the month of December, and we are very much grateful to India and Russia for our, you know, uh, 71 war fighting. And uh, 16 December is our victory day. Thank you very much again. Welcome, sir. Welcome to our show. And I would like to request another academic expert, the highly academician Professor Novikov, sir, from Kurgan, Russia. Sir, welcome. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. And uh, I think uh, today our topic will very interesting for all of us. Thank you very much, sir, for joining with us. Uh, dear viewers, we have another learned academic expert from Patna, India, Dr. Shamsul Huda, sir, and he will join in the coming part of our program. Uh, now, I would like to request, uh, I think, oh, I think uh, he has joined with us. I would like to request Dr. Shamsul Huda, sir, to join with us. So welcome. Welcome to our show, Orthopedic Solution Academy. Thank you, Dr. Tanvir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, dear viewers, now I would like to request our honorable speaker, uh, Dr. Amar Sani, sir, uh, to present his excellent topic, that is the trifocal osteosynthesis for management of large bone defect. Dr. Amar Sani, sir, would you please uh, share your screen with us? Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm sharing my screen. Dr. Tanvir, sir, my screen is visible now. Yes, sir. It is uh, yes. absolutely visible. and uh, We I'm can see your slide clearly and we can uh, hear you loudly. So it is perfect. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Today's my topic is trifocal synthesis for management of large bone defect. Usually, a defect which is more than 8 centimeters is the result of high velocity trauma. Mostly, it is a grade 3 big injury sequels. And apart from bony gap, there is significant soft tissue loss and soft tissue injury. So at times, we get such bone defect post benign tumor excision also. Uh, such bone defects are basically a therapeutic challenge for surgeon and patient. It requires stage treatment, whatever may be the treatment modality chosen, and it requires prolonged duration of treatment. And at times, complex reconstruction requires multimodality approach in the form of orthoplasty, orthopedic surgeon, and plastic surgeon both together. <clears throat> what are different options to treat such defect? A vascular or non-vascular fibula, muscular technique, segment transport, and hybrid fixation. <clears throat> vascular fibula is an excellent option when the defect is very large and there is not enough healthy bone for single or dual corticotomy. Or at times, the soft tissue bed is not as example post irradiation or peripheral vascular disease. Limitation of such treatment is it requires a tertiary center to execute such thing 
as it requires microsurgical anastomosis and an expertise of vascular or plastic surgeon. And there are some donor side morbidity too. Non vascular fibula, it takes too long to unite, too long to hypertrophy, and still it requires protection in cast or breast. Chances of refracture are too high, and unprotected weight bearing takes very long. Cumulative morbidity is too high, and I would not suggest any of my younger colleagues to choose non vascular fibula option for managing such large defect. Muscular technique, the biggest advantage is healing of bone defect as not, in, not dependent on its size of defect. That means a 5 centimeter defect and 50 cent, 15 centimeter defect both can heal in same time frame. But there are some disadvantages also, some limitations also. Soft tissue coverage is must for muscular technique. Once recurrence of infection is there, there are chances of secondary amputation. At times, bone source is limited as posterior crest provides around 40 cc and anterior crest or provides around 15 cc of graft. In that event, graft can be expanded with RIA, allograft or bone graft substitute. It requires prolonged IV antibiotic for a period of 6 to 8 weeks, prolonged hospitalization and kneel weight bearing for longer period. Average time to full weight bearing is around 7.5 months. Hybrid fixation in which initially transport is done over nail and once transport is over, uh, frame is removed and fragment is locked. <clears throat> Another option is segment transport with LRS. The limitation of LRS is it is least modular thing. Uh, axial stiffness is high and CS stiffness is low. And as compared to 1990 spanning, uniplanar frame uh, pin configuration has less stability. And as these pins are inserted from lateral to medial aspect, though it may be from safe zone, but Excursion of tibials, anti ESL, and EDL is significantly affected while uh, fragment is transported. There is no provision for preventing equinus in such frame, and most of patients are in nil weight bearing or toe stretch fit in majority of treatment period. And in femur, when uh, LRS is used for segment transport, if defect is more than six centimeters, chances of porous are high. Segment transport with a lizard. For large bone defect, it is the indication. It provides excellent outcome, both functional and radiological, and it obviates need for plastic surgery in flap cover. But it has some limitation also. There are some regenerate issues, means hypotrophic regenerate, regenerate deviation. At times, stability is an issue. At times, biology is an issue. Docking site non-union, malunion is often seen. And if foot frame is not applied, equina succus usually with such large transport and duration of treatment is long as healing index on an average is around 30 to 45 days per centimeter. And in some case, it may even extend up to 60 days per centimeter. This long learning curve. So, <clears throat> means why one should opt for trifocal osteosynthesis? Means what is the need for that? Because when the Elizabeth fixator is applied, it is usually applied as the first and final fixator. And when frame is kept for 15 months, or more than that period, generally wire deforms elastically and over a period of time it deforms plastically. The pintract issue, loss of pages and patient requires frequent follow-up visit and financial burden, morbidity, disturbed psychology often leads to premature frame removal, refracture, persistent of non-union, even at times amputation and lost in follow-up. And <clears throat> last year in 2020, January, Dr. Dawar Pele had came to India and in conference, he had said this thing that Elizabeth principle will remain forever, but it is apparatus may not. Means most of things now these days they are doing with internal fixation or fixator assisted things, but it will not stand true in developing country like India and Bangladesh. And in management of open fracture management, it still holds a good place uh, apparatus. And but we should take every effort to reduce the time in frame and as and when possible without compromising the outcome. One should understand the terminology of bifocal osteosynthesis versus monofocal bifocal lengthening. When one is doing lengthening, if it is done through single corticotomy, one can term it as a monofocal lengthening. And if it is through bio, two corticotomy, one can uh, say it as a bifocal lengthening. But in the event of transport, uh, bifocal transport, a term coined by Dr. Ketani, where a process of bone healing occurs at two different sites, a corticotomy site regenerate occurs and a docking site occurs. 
So in bifocal, one can have a simultaneous dissection at corticotomic site and compression at fracture site. An alternate way is to accelerate compression at uh, docking site and gradual dissection at corticotomy site. This sends two for smaller defect less than six centimeters where you can do accelerated compression or acute docking. But for larger defect, it is not a good option. And in such acute compression, liver arm of muscles become uh, less. So there is a type of pseudo paralysis and one need to give compensation till limb length discrepancy is addressed. Trifocal ascensions is term where a process of uh, bone formation occurs at three places, two corticotomy and a docking site. A converging trifocal in which fragments are con uh, transported fragments are converging towards each other to dock and tandem trifocal in trans uh, transported fragments run in tandem to reach the other end. <clears throat> one can have all wire frame or one can have a fire frame with wire and half in hybrid from depending on surgeon preference but when one is doing tandem trifocal osteosynthesis proximal ring bears the burnt of dissection and all wire frame have possibility of pro curvatum and valgus if single ring is used <clears throat> regarding all wire frame a spanning 1990 spanning is difficult in transported segment and one cannot give much more stability with on single ring with two or three wire at times one has to insert drop wire and regarding all wire frame, which gives good axial micro motion, that concept comes when fragments are docked. Before that, once fragments are transported, one needs to give good stability, which is given with hybrid frame. And here, in transported fragment with medial face wire and perpendicular half in give 1990 spanning prevents toggle of fragment, and regenerate deviation is seen less often. And once docking is done, one can dynamize the frame and gradually remove half pin. Uh, one can see a case where a uh, converging trifocal osteosynthesis is planned with four rings and a foot ring. This is what my converging trifocal frame, prefabricated frame, will look like. The corticotomy will be done between first and second ring and third and fourth ring, and uh, 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 second and third ring will be gradually compressed. These are post corticotomy XA and defect of XA, clinical picture of frame post fixation. Uh, another case where we have done a tandem trifocal osteosynthesis, large defect, middle fragment removed, a prefabricated frame where two corticotomy done between first and second ring and second and third ring. Last ring is kept as a carbon ring to have a good radiological assessment of ankle joint and docking site. This post fixation XA and docking site XA, gap site XA. Clinical picture of frame where in proximal fragment three wire and two half pin are there, and in transported fragment of medial face wire and perpendicular half pin is there. Uh, one can choose a single rod versus individual rod between each ring depending on surgeon's preference. But when one is doing tandem trifocal synthesis, single rod, one is having very difficulty in compre comprehending how to transport the fragment. I prefer to use individual rod to connect each ring. And routing segment, I prefer a wire and half pin instead of two wire because two wires give less spanning as compared to a wire and a half pin. This is a frame applied by someone else, but it is not a properly applied frame. So one should have a proper, uh, all four rods should be of proper length. It should be at zero level at proximal side and uh, it should be at equidistant place. Uh, as uh, suggested in books, now one should have a two ring in proximal fragment and two ring in distal fragment and floating segment will have a ring. But it is not possible to have in, in each and every individual to apply two ring as our patients are not that uh, in big in height as compared to Western patient. So at times we have to treat such patient with single ring on proximal fragment and corticotomy to be done between first and second and second and third ring. Here, uh, have applied foot ring to prevent equine uh, to treat equinus, and even if there is no equinus, one need to apply a foot ring to prevent equinus and have an adequate liver arm of distal fragment. <laughs> Regarding how to prevent angulus, and whenever one is inserting a frame, a proximal tibial wire which should be parallel to knee joint and distal tibial wire which is supposed to be parallel to ankle joint. If these two wires are perfectly parallel to knee and ankle joint and all four rods are equidistant, then one should not, one should not have any angulation. Corticotomy 
metaphysical corticotomy i always do with free hand technique with 5 mm osteotomy with 5 mm incision when diaphysical osteotomy i used to do with giglisso or at times multiple drill hole technique here in distal fragment distal corticotomy is done with uh, free hand technique while diaphysical corticotomy is done with giglisso at times one is having adequate bone but not an healthy bone to do corticotomy as you can see in such case where whole segment is affected with infected so in that case i have done only distal corticotomy not another corticotomy in tibia but chose to do a corticotomy in distal femur instead of two corticotomy in tibia regarding the rate and rhythm usually after one week of latency i start discharging at 0.75 mm to 1 mm per day initially three times and after one week or four times in a day and any patient who is having a segment transport is likely to have a dull aching pain due to transport because not only bone but skin soft tissues are stretched if one is more pain one can reduce rate or rhythm of dissection if more one can stop the official if still patient is having pain one can stop the official and metaphysical both corticotomy dissection at times compress it and redistract it how to monitor rate and rhythm i apply a paper tape on each four rod and i give a direction in which direction patient has to do dissection and i write a date on that so that when patient comes in follow up we will have fair idea whether the, he has done a proper dissection or not and tape is applied on each rod so that if patient is not doing even dissection one can immediately notice uh, clinically only and these paper tapes are changed at follow up in every follow up here this patient has done uneven distraction which one can easily appreciate even in clinically before taking x uh, regarding follow up visit i usually discharge patient one week after latency once once patient understands the process of uh, distraction and compression i usually discharge patient i ask come uh, i ask them to come for follow up at two week interval once docking is done at two week post docking i ensure that there is limb length discrepancy is addressed and after that patient can come for extended period follow up say 6 to 8 weeks or even 10 weeks docking docking uh, is most important part of segment transport and elisar treatment and many times i have seen results are ruined because adequate care is not taken at the time of docking this is a case which is treated elsewhere where 12 cm segment is transported good regenerate but docking side non in and, and ultimately patient land up in amputation another case 8 cm segment transported but persistent non in a docking side persistent shortening and equinus another case non in an at docking side good regeneration so once you give adequate focus on docking otherwise whole effort will go in vain here that is good regenerate but docking site is in varus and proctoritum here uh, <coughs> regenerate is good but uh, there is gross angulation and such results are not acceptable if one is interested in treating such patient with segment transport <coughs> regarding refreshing of bone ends i wish i prefer to refresh in bone ends at the time of initial debridement because at the time of docking will have constrained space it will be very difficult to refresh in bone end in that uh, constrained space with two rings very near to each other <clears throat> and skin invasion will occur in each and every patient with such large transport one has to incise skin remove fibrous and fibrocartilage tissue over the bone ends open the canal and uh, skin will heal by secondary intention beautifully as one can see in this case regarding docking side mal alignment one can address it preoperatively before posting patient to docking with help of biplanar hinges and washer and adequate surface area is essential to have uh, increased stability and limit the less chances of refracture post frame removal fibular osteotomy i do at the time of docking so that one can compress it acutely otherwise it will be difficult to compress it acutely and post docking i advise patient to do dissection so that limb length disturbance is addressed in in Uh, stage where fragment is transported from distal to proximal site i avoid fibular osteotomy and i allow uh, wound to heal by secondary intention post removing uh, skin invasion and fibrous tissue and this usually occurs in 10 15 days so by this time generally wound issues are do not occur 
bone graft i seldom apply bone graft at docking site because with increased vascularity and stable frame this requires rarely a bone graft but in elderly patient who has gone undergone multiple surgeries one can put bone graft at the time of docking is with idea of not to take any chance post docking dissection is essential to address limb blind disturbance otherwise patient will have residual shortening of around 2 2.53 cm <clears throat> and once post docking dissection is there uh, patient will have limb blind disturbance address another thing which i have uh, seen in kurgan is the acutely compressed around 1 cm dissection that helps in early healing of early consolidation of regenerate foot ring removal i usually do 6 weeks post docking uh, clinical testing in each of my case i always remove rods at fracture site and corticotomy site and ask patient to walk if he is pain free if there is no abnormal movement clinically there is no abnormal movement at fracture site and he is able to walk uh, in corridor that means there is good union and one can now start dynamizing the frame so this is the sequence of frame removal which i follow clinical testing dynamization i in ask patient to walk as much as possible unaided walking even allow him to do cycling and radiological assessment of regenerate and docking during follow up visit and i remove frame and usually cast or brace application doesn't require and rarely hybrid fixation is required the, uh, regarding treating such fact Uh, defect as a visiting surgeon i usually do not prefer as a uh, myself as a traveling elisa surgeon in uh, very few incidents i go to my colleagues where i have a good rapport with them and i never go as a host surgeon because in such situation results will not be optimum because if you do not counsel patient properly i don't think that we can give optimal result and in even when i have treated patient elsewhere i usually insist for follow up at my place in this case this patient was treated by elisa surgeon but index surgeon could not do adequate counseling and patient opted for amputation even before cortical anatomy uh, <clears throat> implication of uh, trifocal osteosynthesis this patient had came from cameroon africa and i did double cortical anatomy and her stay was around 4 month only if i would have done single corticotomy she would have to stay in here for around 6 months so it significantly reduces stay in hospital for patient who are coming from such a far distance and the case lady from kenya which i was able to discharge in 4 month if i would have done single corticotomy would have keep her for a period of 6 month in my hospital i'll share few of my cases where i have done trifocal osteosynthesis and, and this case which is treated by my colleague a large gap initial external fixator later on elisa and he has done single corticotomy and it he healed beautifully in 16 cm gap healed beautifully in 18 months i mean it is have nothing against this but it takes little longer in frame in such large gap if one is doing a single corticotomy Uh, <clears throat> this is my case where uh, there is open grade 3b fracture with healed wound uh, initially i thought of preserving middle segment but on opening it had hardly any peristal attachment it came in my hand so i had to remove it and i planned for tendon trifocal osteosynthesis the resultant gap was very large 20 cm foot ring was applied to prevent equinus here the corticotomy was done between first and second ring and second and third ring and at 11 half one frame was removed and without any limb like disturbance with good functional outcome and healing index was external fixator index was 17.2 per days per centimeter and he has excellent functional outcome another case lady from cameroon africa uh, bilateral infected non indian tibia right side was more uh, more gap uh, <clears throat> here on right side i opted for converging trifocal osteosynthesis 18 cm gap equinus correction assembly applied proximal and distal tibial corticotomy done docking done at 4 months and uh, uh, left india at 4 months and removed frame at uh, africa only she was in frame for around 2 years because she had not came in follow up due to this uh, covid pandemic and she removed frame there only but she had good functional outcome and she was able to walk unaided post frame removal and her both leg healed beautifully 61 year age 3 year post injury 11 surgeries multiple bone grafting 
सो एल्डरली पेशेंट मल्टीपल सर्जरी लो मोरल रीहेब इज डिफिकल्ट इन सच केस ही वॉज बोन ग्राफ्टेड फॉर थ्री टाइम्स दिस इज ऑस्टोपोलॉजी बिकॉज आई इज नॉट वॉकिंग एंड फाइनेंशियल कंस्टेंट एंड साइकोलॉजिकल डिस्टर्बेंस आर देर इन सच केस इफ वी एक्सटेंड फ्रेम फॉर से वेरी लॉन्ग पीरियड पेशेंट मे नॉट कॉपरेट सो आई प्लान फॉर डबल कॉर्टिकोटमी टेंडम ट्राइफोकल एंड एट सिक्सटीन मंथ आई वॉज इन पोजिशन टू रिमूव द फ्रेम एंड इट हिल्ड नाइसली एंड पेशेंट वॉज इन पोजिशन टू वॉक नाइसली another case patient presented to me a 6 month post injury this was the situation at the time of presentation all half pins were loose patient was in severe pain so i used this cloth to hold the pin in position he was even treated with cross leg flap initially which was rejected uh, large gap 16 cm gap tendon trifocal docking at 3 and 1/2 month and frame removal at 11 month extra fixator index is 20 days per cm Six month post trauma removal. There is slight residual uh, varus at distal end and increased slope of proximal tibia, but good functional outcome. Another case: no apparent bone loss. Initially, grade three B injury treated elsewhere with external fixator. Magnitude of soft tissue injury was underestimated initially. Closed then uh, closed primarily. Then a whole flap was rejected. When he presented me, a large part of bone was exposed in a vascular. I did conversion trifocal osteosynthesis, and at ten, uh, this is pre-docking situation. And once I did docking, two rings were very near to each other. In such case, it is better to reposition a second and third ring so that radiological assessment would be easier of uh, docking side. <coughs> Post-docking resection done and clinical testing done at ten month, and this patient awaits frame removal now. Elderly patient, seventy year age. vehicle accident low socio economic class treated with external fixator exposed a vascular bone it presented to me at 12 weeks uh, whole a vascular bone removed 15 cm gap did uh, tendon trifocal osteosynthesis carbon ring at distal ring distal part for better better radiological assessment proximal free hand technique uh, corticotomy and diaphyseal giglio corticotomy transport and at 80 days i was able to dock him and at 10.5 month uh, frame removal was done good functional outcome and healed nicely protected in breast for few months uh, last few cases only giant cell tumor uh, with pathological fracture detailed counseling done for megaphosis versus resection orthodosis each patient took 6 weeks to decide whether to go for megaphosis or resection orthodosis whole Uh, proximal tibia was resected and blocked, and across knee frame was applied distal femur and distal corticotomy done. Docking done at two and half month. Uh, as one can see, the post docking uh, there is no pin check issues, and at nine month I was in position to remove the frame, and external fixator index was twenty two point five days per centimeter, and as one can see that it has knee has arthritis beautifully, and overall alignment is good. another case osteosarcoma treated with mega processes which uh, broken processes explained all treatment modality amputation fusion revision and uh, patient opted for fusion due to cost constraint uh, removed uh, broken processes 16 cm gap distal femur and distal tibia corticotomy docking done 10 month post procedure and frame removal at 14 months external fixator index 26.26 uh, 26 day per cm A three-year post-femoral uh, whole region it consolidates nicely and knee fuses nicely and patient walks on it easily. So these are the usual procedure which we do post in such cases: skin graft, corticotomy, docking, fibula osteotomy. Bone grafted docking is seldom required. Bone grafted regenerate site is rarely required. Frame modification in under necessary is rarely required. But I usually address any instability when I do uh, docking. tl landing in some cases if one has not used foot frame because i use foot frame in all cases of large transport tl landing was not done in any of my cases i have not used antibody bits any of my cases and repeat bone graft at docking site was not done in any of my case so literature shows this many problems obstacle and complications but many of these are not seen in our series so what is the take home message is uh, this tendon trifocal osteosynthesis significantly reduces external fixator index 
it reduces not only external fixed rate index, it reduces stay in uh, hospital. Number of additional procedures are less as compared to what is shown in literature, and true complication is less. And follow-up visit, travel, and treatment cost is significantly reduced. And most of patients return to pre-injury occupation when one has applied treat frame properly with adequate stability. So, degree of bone loss is not the only determining factor for amputation. Patient factor regarding age, comorbidity, smoking, alcohol, peripheral vascular disease do dictate whether patient should go for salvage or amputation. A motivated patient and detailed counseling gives excellent outcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for your excellent presentation. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, that, was a, that was a magnificent presentation. Now, I would like to request uh, Professor Mofakrul Bari, sir. Uh, to share his knowledge regarding the trifocal osteosynthesis. Professor Mafakarot Bari, sir, please. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear yes, clearly, sir. sir. Thank you. Very good. Very excellent presentation. Thank and you, the, sir. I must uh, congratulate uh, Omar Sani for mm -hmm. giving a elaborate idea regarding the big bone defects. And uh, really, you have mentioned all the pros and cons of your mm. paper. Mm. And uh, especially, you know, in our third world country, uh, mm. where we have a densely populated people and poor people, neglected mm. treatment are going on all the time. And mm. to salvage yes. all these kinds of problems, difficulties, uh, I think Elizar will be the good option, best option, I should mm. mm. say. And you rightly mentioned more than eight centimeter. There are lots of uh, uh, you know treatment modalities, but uh, what I have seen in my life and uh, the cases that you have shown, all kinds of these kinds of varieties of treatment, varieties of cases that I am also doing with bifocal, trifocal, trifocal. Really, it is a very good, and the biological parameters. The shown by the uh, academician Gabriel Abramovich Lizarov, we are still following all these kinds of things. And uh, in, in in literature, you can see the regarding the complications, obstacles, and other problems. You can uh, they have written a lot of things, but in real life, you cannot see all these things. And uh, I have a publication. I, I know whenever you you send one of these trifocal in uh, Facebook. <laughs> And I, I congratulate you at that time. And I told you, you can Thank see you. my public also trifocal that I have done in American Medical Journal. You remember that. So yes, thank sir. you very much uh, for giving your knowledge to all the uh, uh, budding orthopedic surgeons. It is really a learning case. And only the salvage procedure that you have shown. And thank you very much for your uh, nice presentation and deliberation and showing us the difficult cases okay thank you again thank you sir thank you sir. Thank, thank you very much sir uh, for sharing your knowledge uh, now i would like to request uh, professor novikov sir to say something regarding the presentation sir please dear uh, professor uh, sunny i want to congratulate you uh, thank you sir you and your colleagues with uh, excellent result and just now we can see a uh, few cases you show with uh, monolateral monofocal uh, device and, and uh, doctor cannot get uh, real result and only when we start uh, support the patient with the uh, principle of Lizarov. I won't repeat it again doesn't matter which kind of frame we will use uh, mm -hmm. principle of Elizarov and uh, I am yes, sir. very happy because uh, just now in the India in Bangladesh uh, we have uh, excellent surgeon who can real support any patient not only poor patient including Africa including uh, Asia and uh, just now I think uh, if we will uh, comparison uh, our results uh, with uh, another part of uh, our world. Your result is good. It's perfect. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for kind words, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. 
Uh, sir, I have uh, one question to you, sir. Uh, yes, you please. told that uh, uh, you will do destruction in the part of drocking. Uh, but when uh, you will start the destruction? No, no. What I said is once you do docking, means at the time of docking, you will compress the bone ends around 2 to 3 centimeters acutely. So once you are done docking, then also you should start continue restricting at corticromy side so that patient will not have a limb line discrepancy. At times what we see is once docking is over, we, uh, doctor do not advise them to continue restricting at corticromy side. So patient will have a residual sorting of 1.52 1, 1. centimeter. And which is very commonly seen when, in patients who are treated with LRS because they do not advise patient to continue distraction till limb length discrepancy is addressed. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now I would like to request thank Dr. Uh, Shamsul Huda, sir, to share his knowledge uh, and uh, if he has any question uh, to Dr. Amr Sani, sir. Dr. Shamsul Huda, sir, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tanvir. It was a real a wonderful talk by Dr. Amasoni. It was it is a real yes, learning every day. He has seen a variety of cases, variety of cases from all the aspects, tumor, distraction, everything. So it's a very good case, very good case. We learned a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I would like to thank our honorable speaker, Dr. Amasoni, sir, and I would like to thank our academic expert, Professor Mofakarul Bari, sir, Professor Novikov, sir, and uh, Dr. Shamsul Huda, sir. Uh, dear viewers, uh, uh, we want to uh, end up our program today and hope we'll see you in the uh, coming Friday with another topic. Before that, I'd like to thank Raj Tubi for helping us to arrange this type of academic program and definitely Renata Pharmaceuticals Bangladesh Limited for sponsoring our program. I'm Dr. Mohamed Tanvir Ashraf saying bye-bye to you today. Hope we'll see you in the coming Friday with another magical Elizabeth topic. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very good. You are watching Raj TV. Jagorone, Bangladesh. Please subscribe our channel.